really Adam, Adam Bresson, and uh, I've actually been doing PHP for about five years in MySQL. Last year I spoke on Palm Security as well, which my grandfather got really upset with me about because about a month afterwards the stock dove because all the viruses came out and stuff, but I had nothing to do with it. I had set the record straight. He's watching this on the web, so now I'll feel really good, you know, and he'll like put me back in his will and stuff, which is really important. All right, so we're going to start off with talking about what we're going to learn today. Um, so that if it's not something you want to learn, or it makes you sad, or it hurts you in some way, you can walk out. We're going to learn PHP basics and uses. PHP is a web programming language. It's very simple. It m lets you make dynamic web pages. It's free. It's not by Microsoft, and it's not ASP. So these are all very good reasons to use it. Yeah, let's have a round of applause. Yeah! Yeah! All right, uh, we're going to talk about how to secure, I feel so tall right now. We're going to talk about how to secure PHP installations and how to use encryption with PHP so that you guys can protect your PHP scripts and the information you store. We're also going to talk about how to make a link and email grabber, which is the data mining. So I give you guys code. You can expand it, make it look really, put your little elite conversation in it, you know, put your little hacker name on the top of it and run wild with it, wild with it. We're going to talk about how to make a live search engine, a lot like Asta La Vista, um, but it's really fast. It runs in PHP. It's super quick. You can basically search any web pages you want to and get information off them. We're going to make a port scanner with PHP. Do you guys know what that is? Uh, how, we're going to emulate TCP IP traffic using PHP sockets. It actually has a full implementation of sockets in it. You can, do, uh, you can actually set up sessions and communicate directly with a socket on uh, any server in the world. Um, I'm going to give you guys some ideas for your own expansion of this code. I know that this is, this is just for you. This will make you feel good about yourselves. I want you to take what I did, make it, like I said, look crazy, you know, add like your little hacker speak to it, stuff, you know. Send it out on the internet, let the world see it, get the feds upset. And the last part we're going to learn today is how to last an hour in a hot conference room without dinner. Without dinner. There won't be any dinner served, unfortunately. Oh, my gosh. There we go. <clears throat> All right, quick overview uh, from the PHP manual. PHP is an HTML embedded scripting language. Much of its syntax is borrowed from C, Java, and Perl with a couple of unique PHP features thrown in. Basically, what they did is they, th when they originally created the language, they just wanted to be able to put, you know, use variables on a web page to be able to customize it. So they wanted to be able to set it up so that you could put any name on the page, any information, draw it out of a database. That came second. Um, they want web developers to write dynamically generated pages. I'm going to show you guys an example of a dynamically generated page. In case you never saw one before, he said sarcastically. All right, the beauty of PHP is that it outputs HTML, so you can dynamically shape web pages. Its output is just HTML. And you get to use the variables and the structures in it and the different aspects of it to make customize HTML. In addition, it can build images with the GD library. This is like one of the coolest things in the world. It has a built-in library that you can create your own images, much like Logo, for anyone who used to use that on the Apple IIe. <laughs> Woo! Logo rules! Then it became a weird Christian bookstore. But um, yeah, so you can build your own graphics and images uh, using PHP. It interacts directly with 15 plus databases. It has native C support for 15 databases. Not like an ODBC, although it has that module in it direct interfaces to very popular databases, FileMaker, uh, Microsoft, and uh, MS C <laughs> SQL and Postgres. Uh, it competes against ASP and JSP. To give you guys some example, it's in use now on 1.75 million websites, which is a lot for a free technology that has had basically no commercial company behind it until about seven months ago when the two people who wrote it decided to form Zen, which is the commercial company. Typical uses, e-commerce. People love using it for e-commerce because it's so well suited for things like a shopping cart. Basically grab a bunch of information out of a database, total it up, do a few little mathematics on it, put like a smiley face on it, a little shopping cart icon, everyone's happy in the world. Um, I created a commercial website two years ago called recommendo.com. This is not a pitch. Jehovah starts with an I. And uh, 
So Recommendo actually uses the customization. It uses MySQL to do the database work on it. Creates the pages from templates. The whole site is literally five pages, and I use PHP to customize it with includes and modules and things like that. I'm going to start with the basics of PHP. Can I just get a show of hands here because this is like what you do when you talk? How many people here have coded PHP before? Fantastic. That's so awesome. When you go on Yahoo's uh, job board and you put in PHP, there's like 10 jobs. When you go to like guru.net, I found like maybe like 30 jobs there. But I knew that there's a larger community of people out there using it. And so we're going to use a few features that you probably weren't familiar with before. Um, I'll stop for questions if you guys have them, but make sure they're relevant to what I'm talking about. At the end of it, if you want, uh, we can sit down and, and you know talk about how to do all the fun stuff with it, how to do database, you know, how to do fake transactions, whatever you want to talk about. But if you want to ask questions, make sure it's relevant to what we're talking about. Okay, since you guys have some experience with PHP before, uh, I'll go over the basics for those who haven't. Basically, you announce PHP in the web page. So you start with two tags, beginning and ending tag, much like JavaScript and much like JSP and ASP. It's <coughs> less than question mark PHP, question mark greater than to close it. All PHP lines end with the terminator. That's the semicolon. Semicolon doesn't get much work out in life, but it gets much work out in, in programming languages. PHP is compiled at runtime, so you get to control its speed and execution directly. What's nice about that is it's not a bytecode language like Java. It's actually compiled as you run it. So you can, so you can use you know, the, the world famous four next loops to put pauses in the middle of your program, have it accomplish things, and have it seem like it's waiting. You know? uh, but you get to control the program flow, which is important. PHP doesn't output anything until you tell it to with print or echo. It's not, uh, it's, it's not like um, ASP, which has some uh, basic procedures in it and things that will uh, automatically output to print. You have to tell it to output the data. Um, I use UltraEdit to code PHP, and this is a plug because this is like the coolest software in the world and the second most thefted software in the world next to WinZip. I thought you'd like to know that statistic. Um, but it has a PHP world, word file which has context highlighting and tag finishing for you too. Quick technique, how to do output. You use print or echo. What is the difference between print or echo? You don't care. They both do the exact same thing. Except that when you use print or echo, you're really using a function. So you have to use a quotation mark. And it, it depends how it processes the variables when it outputs it. Um, it always outputs a standard out. It's usually the browser. Print F, neat function. It prints formatted text according to regex expressions. So if you want to format your text and you want to put commas in the numbers or you know the right amount of decimal points, you can do it from that. You can escape in and out of PHP. For example, you could use at the top the title tag in HTML. And you could do, you know, start PHP, dollar sign foo, and PHP, parentheses, home page. They love this. Like when you do like a page for a business website, and at the top it says like you sign in, and you're like, oh, my username's Adam. And then it says Adam's web page after it. That's darling, isn't it? That's why. That's like a lot of PHP and ASP, it's like, oh, that's so sweet. That's so darling. All right, quick technique, how to do variables here. OK, I'm looking right now. Is anyone asleep? Is anyone asleep? I just started. OK, you do not need to declare variables. PHP has automatic memory allocation and typing. Do, do, do. That's like the coolest thing. You don't have to type your variables. You don't have to declare them at the beginning. PHP takes care of all your typing for you. In fact, there's a whole series of commands that let you get the type for a variable, that let you change the type of a variable, and uh, touch, poke, and prod variables. It's fantastic stuff. You initialize a variable simply by using it as an expression. For example, dollar sign foo equals Adam. Oh, where do you get that value from? Uh, for <laughs> it establishes the variable foo as a string with the value of Adam. Use get type to determine the type of your variable. It's either boolean, integer, double, string, array, object, resource, null, which is new in PHP 4, or unknown type. Yes, sir? Yes, you can. In fact, you can actually declare variables with a function and automatically say it can only hold doubles or it can only hold integer, in, integer numbers. Um, and then, like I said, as of PHP 4, you can actually have it be null, not you know just empty, but null. Um, so, and it's used in a lot of database support. Yes? Right, you can use, right, yeah. 
They accept a few. I, I ran into that problem. He's saying that when you start your PHP, you can actually do less than question mark, and you don't need to put less than question mark PHP. But I found some server incompatibilities between the, uh, using that, like on Windows sometimes. It thinks it's ASP, and it sends it to the wrong. Like when you use uh, ISAPI with, um, uh, with, what's the lovely Microsoft web serving product? Blank now, blank. Yes, IIS. When you use it with IIS 5, sometimes they'll try to process it as ASP. And then it like Microsoft gets mad and they report you to the feds. Wait, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that last part, I'm, I'm totally lying about that. Uh, <laughs> quick technique, arrays. Arrays are the coolest part of PHP to me because you can do a lot of stuff with it. You basically can read the contents of a database into an array, sort it, play with it, manipulate it, send it home to your mom because it's been bad. You declare an array simply by saying dollar sign foo equals array parentheses and you give it values. It defines the uh, variable foo as a two element array. Um, when you refer to that variable, how cool, how quaint, you just do dollar sign foo element one, element two, element three. Yes. Excellent question. He asks if you run into buffer overflows when you, uh, because PHP takes care of your typing and memory allocation. Um, I haven't run into any problems except when basically if you don't, when you do a while loop and you're, you're running around inside of a while loop and you keep incrementing like, you know, your index variable like i or something and you forget to increment it, then basically it outputs like 3,000 times, shuts down the uh, Apache thread, gets really mad. So that would be an example of it. You just have to make sure to terminate your uh, loops. Just like, you know, if you're using basic even. Um, it has a really neat sort function called nat sort in it, PHP, that lets you sort your array naturally. So instead of, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, instead of 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. Um, and also you could shuffle and randomize the elements of array. This is really cute for kids' games. Like, you know, like when you're a kid and, and you do your flashcards. Whoa, giddy up. Uh, when you do your flashcards out there, and uh, it would actually... Oh, that was cool. Okay, uh, when you do your flashcards, you actually shuffle your array. So you can do that. Um, yes. Yes, I, I'm missing a quotes there. You're absolutely right. I'm very bad. He's pointing out here uh, that I didn't in my presentation. You're supposed to do quote x1, quote, comma, quote, x2, quote. Oh, God, I'm worthless. <laughs> All right. How to handle flow in PHP. Your while loop. It's the greatest, it's the strongest, it's the coolest thing in the world. I'm going to get up and flex over it. Oh, while loops are the greatest thing in the entire universe. Um, they execute while a given, until, or, until or while a given condition exists. Um, so like, until i equals 10, keep executing. It's much quicker than a forward next loop and more flexible. They have a new construct in PHP 4, um, which is basically like, like uh, for next else, um, which uses while. Um, they also have if, else if, and else, which is uh, conditional. You guys probably know this from other programming languages. If condition, then do this. Else if, condition two, do this. Else, do this. Uh, PHP has switch in case, which is really cool. So like a great example is, it, so you could say on day, do these things. And if case is Monday, do this. If case is Tuesday, do this. It's kind of a modified if and else if and else, um, but it's really, it looks very clean when you code it. You have break and exit. Break pops you out of a while loop or a for next loop. And it's useful for searching and sorting, like if you're doing a bubble sort. And then also exit, which terminates the script. So this is how you can implement basic security in PHP. So basically you can check the session or the user credential at the top of the page and then exit out of the script so nothing else goes on. Yeah, I'll show you a while loop there. Oh, you don't need a done. It's implied, but you can use done. Um, quick techniques that it has. You, oh, bye. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Go. Go. Get out of here. All right. MySQL. Free database. Just like uh, Microsoft MSQL, except it lacks transaction support, which is not a problem because you can actually emulate transactions using PHP. Postgres SQL. Uh, SQL. More robust. It, it actually has transactions in it. It's usually free, but it's less supported. Like, Two reasons why you should use MySQL with PHP. Number one, almost every single company that provides PHP web hosting offers MySQL and not PostgreSQL. And number two, as a PHP 4 
uh, the MySQL commands are natively compiled into the, uh, into the programming language. So that it's much faster, actually. Um, it has an ODBC connector, so you can connect to Bob's XYZ database, <laughs> as long as it uses uh, ODBC. Um, and PHP, as I mentioned before, supports over 15 plus databases natively through modules. All right, we're going to talk about the atypical uses for PHP, not like the mom and pop programming site shopping cart where you go out and you shop for a few things and then you have your little cookie come up and, it, oh, it gets all confused and unhappy. We're going to talk about securing PHP and using encryption. We're going to talk about data mining, which is basically grabbing assets off other people's websites from uh, PHP, from a PHP server. And we're going to talk about web security. Before I do, I'm going to show you guys a basic PHP script now and my website. Yes, this is running on Windows. So everyone can go, oh my god, why is he using Windows? That's so bad. Windows is so horrible. All right, all you social engineers, look at the name I named for my hard drive. What is the significance of that? Could it be a reference to Jack Kerouac's On the Road? Who knows? It's crazy. Okay. I use PHP with Xtami on Windows. I don't actually use IIS. And um, it's a good thing because it runs much more quickly. Oh, yeah, I like that. OK. <clears throat> I crossed the country. I've been gone for a month. I decided to end my road trip in Las Vegas. This isn't just for show. This is something I've actually done. And I made this website so my parents knew I was alive along the way. So what I did, oh, is that sweet? Come on. Oh, what a mama's boy. Yeah, that would be okay if she weren't dead. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mom, you're out there somewhere. Um, so I took a trip across the country on US 50, and I kept a website along the way. And I wanted it to very easily, I wanted to be able to update my website when I'm on the road. And uh, I wanted to do two important things. First, my mom should hear all the stories about the happy people I met and all the national parks I went to. Second, my mom shouldn't hear all the other stories about the people I met along the way. You know what I'm saying? Like those people you meet who's only, you know, their first name. And you're in a bar and they're like, let's dance. So you're like, okay, let's dance. I'm in the middle of nowhere. And they don't give them your real name. So the key was <laughs> to actually prevent those stories from getting to my mom. So what did I use? PHP. I used it mostly because it was cheap and free and easy. So this is my website. This is where I went across the country. Doesn't look too uh, harmful or anything. Okay, first thing I did was, these are links up here, hidden links at the top left and top right. This is the link to the uh, super secret stuff that I don't want my mom to hear. So of course I, uh oh, whoa, there it goes. I'll tell you, Windows is a beautiful thing. So I protect this with the following code here. Let's switch. Let's go into my web. PHP is very, very efficient. I point this out to everyone. And I will be using Ultra Edit, which, in the spirit of my road trip, I got for free. OK, here's the basics of it. Uh, I know it's going to be hard to see from the back because it's really, really tiny and small. Basically, PHP can do HTTP authentication. So what you can actually do is use a database of usernames and passwords. And uh, you know the uh, blue sites, the porn sites, they really like this. You can actually do. Um, oh, I Darn, darn, I clicked the wrong file here. Let's do, let's see here, this one. OK. <clears throat> At the top of the page, so does everyone here, since Microsoft employs most of us, the reason is because they're right. You can't hate Microsoft that much, right? They make us all, OK, everyone hates Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> basically, you do, uh, you do uh, the PHP HTTP authentication. You can use the database to do it at the top of the page. And I have it uh, here secretly also in my little gas section, actually. There's a difference between PHP on Windows and Unix, ladies and gentlemen. Right? When you run it on Windows, you have to actually, you don't have to declare the variable. But when you make a comparison on a variable to see if it has the contents or not, you have to use is set. But when you run it on Linux, you can just say, if parentheses variable, then do these things. Um, so I set up a little section here where you, I could upload my file from the web. So I wouldn't have to actually like set my laptop up and go crazy with it. 
And I use PHP to actually do things like, <clears throat> stepping over here. I use PHP to set up uh, which leg of my trip I was on. So if I was on the US 50 section, or if I was on the uh, Route 66 section, it would show a different map to people. It would show a different set of my journals, and it would show uh, different information, and hopefully not the secret stuff to my mom. So that's a typical use of PHP. Now we're going to get into the atypical use of PHP. And let's start this up again. Okay. Securing PHP and encryption. This is the general model of how you'll see PHP implemented. Time check. Anyone raise their hand and give me the time. 6.35. We'll be done in 15 minutes. All right. On the left side, you have Apache. You run the uh, PHP as a module. Please don't run PHP as CGI. Please don't. When you were talking about buffer overflows earlier and memory allocation problems, basically every single CGI spawns its own process off the Apache, uh, off the Apache kernel, and it's just a mess for PHP. It slows down your scripts for you significantly. So you'll have SSL and you'll have Perl in there too, and then you can see I have uh, PHP and MySQL. When you install PHP on Linux. Make sure you do the dash dash with Apache switch. That's how you compile it as a module in Apache. Uh, installation on Windows, they have a new, nice new setup program for PHP that they just debuted with PHP 4.0.5. Um, but normally, you just unzip it to a directory. Like I said, two things. Don't run it as CGI, and don't run it on Windows 2000 as an ISAPI module. Securing your installation. Verify that PHP is running under the nobody Linux user. PHP 3 didn't do that by default. You had to set it. Um, always clean HTML out of form input. Make sure, please, that you take the actual, you can do a strip HTML um, and actually strip HTML out of form input, because otherwise you're going to get people putting their own little links there and the crazy stuff. Um, never let a user directly execute a system command based on input. This is practical sense for most of us, but you can actually use exec to execute uh, commands on a Unix box from PHP. So don't do something stupid like, here, enter your system command in this form, and I'll execute it on my box. Right, bad idea. I'm telling you right now. Even if you're my mom. Filter, she's dead, you know. Filter uploads, <laughs> filter uploads and partition your directories out. One very handy trick I found is that you should not put all your scripts in one single directory. Because once they know that that's the location of it, they can reference your scripts directly. And some Apache configurations actually output PHP as text if you reference the file directly. So then they can look at your passwords, etc. And always run the latest build. Um, there's a vulnerability in 4.0.1. I have to point this out because it's really um, that it basically forgets to, <laughs> it forgets to encrypt your data. And you can't use sockets, right. And uh, there was a small mistake on their part. A few words about MySQL and PHP. Use PHP uh, includes to partition your database's username and passwords. What that means is include simply takes a file, sticks it into the middle of your executing application. So put your username and password in an include file, and then step it up and take your PHP file that contains your username and password, put it above the www tree so that it's just, it's just a precaution so that one time when you forget and you name your index.php page index slash slash.php and decides to do a directory listing for you, that they can't find out that file that says name of my database, username, and password. Set up your security properly to limit full access to certain usernames in MySQL and set up separate read and write users. Yes? Pardon me? Oh, yes. You can actually, like I said, you can execute Unix commands from PHP. And you could. So, you mean, is it insecure in that you could set yourself as root and go ahead and, and execute a few things? Um, yes, you could. If you had control of your own server and do, and do it, but most of, the com most of the commercial installations that you'll find out there in the web host, like PHP web hosting, which is a plug for them because they're awesome, they're 10 bucks and they have like unlimited databases and everything, um, they usually will lock it down so you can't execute system commands from PHP. You just want to change the user that you're running the command under? Yes, you can do that from exec is the command. And you can run set UID on it. Um, and back up your SQL data. 
All right, use encryption and hashes. There are two types, encrypt, encrypt, and encrypt, decrypt. Uses cipher, key, data, and mode to encrypt bidirectional. So you can actually encrypt and decrypt. And then there's one-way encryption in PHP, which is MD5. Everyone knows MD5 by now. It's the fucking coolest thing. Or did I just swear? <laughs> right. Um, it generates a message digest, 32 character representation of strings of any length. It's useful for storing uh, passwords. It's useful for creating hashes. Always store passwords and credit cards with an MD5 hash of it. PHP has global variables. It reports every time. You run PHP info to dump all the global variables. Important ones, HTTP refer, their last location, their browser and user agent, remote address, their IP address, which is something I use when I, um, when I set up that security on my website. Uh, I was telling the story earlier. One of my friends thought it would be so cool to try to hack the HTTP uh, authentication because apparently that's all the time he has in his world is to go into my website and read about you know where I've been. And so what I did is I set up a little script there to every time he tried it to email me the passwords he would try and his IP address so I could watch him every time. And then I'd call him on the phone right after he did because I had an email to my little uh, like my Panasonic phone. I go, stop trying to hack my website. Stop it. I'll tell you what's there. You know, it's all stories about your mom. <laughs> uh, I could do that every single time. And then <laughs> HTTP cookie virus, which is an associated array of all the cookies that are passed. Okay, data mining. <laughs> just, like our little, just like our little dig dug friend would. Okay, um, we're going to basically use pattern matching, regular expressions to grab data from websites. Now, this is a code example. You guys can write it down or afterwards. Uh, you, I'm going to have this little pad up here, and if you want to write me your email, you know, and your fake name, your crazy hacker name, if you want, I'll email you guys out my presentation or any of the code you want. I'm going to step through it really quickly for you guys. Um, this is it. This will let you grab links or email off people's page. The first step is set the URL. The second step is PHP can read HTTP and FTP by default. How cool is that? So the first thing you do is you grab a file, which is the URL. The file command recognizes HTTP. And then you implode it. As you see there, I implode it on nothingness, so I grab everything out of it. And then I use a pattern match here. You'll see here, h reference, ah, h reference equals, which is you know a link for everyone who programs HTML. On the page, get the number of matches, then run a while. This is the while and list construct, which I think is kind of cool. It'll separate any, everything out into a list, and then it will grab all your matches for you, and then it will print them out for you. See, those two lines are, are tied there. Set your desired URL. Quickly grab the contents of a page. Match all AH references for links. Cycle through the matches, and then print them formatted with the URL. Well, hopefully this is just the germ of an idea, because what I'd like to see people do is to at, use uh, regular expressions, or P-regular expressions, which are POSIX, POSIX compatible. Um, to match email addresses, I'd like to see the URLs be written to a file, which would be very handy to have. So you go about your work day, and you come home, and you find an entire website's links cataloged, or any other asset for that matter. You can match images. You can match email addresses. You can match references to their mom, whatever you want to do. Pass an array of URLs to, uh, to open and pattern match while through them. So maybe you want to match several. Maybe you want it to go out and do a report on several of the top websites, and you want to go to hp.com and search everywhere on every one of their pages for email addresses. Write them to a little file for yourself and have them. You can do that with the magic of PHP. You can also follow URLs off of the HTTP, so you can go you know three or four levels deep. My live search engine that I designed. These are pretty basic PHP concepts. Um, once you step beyond the regular database and uh, variables and arrays and things. Basically, I do two arrays there. I while through the arrays. I grab the contents of a URL. I'm essentially reading the entire chunk of a web page into a variable so I can play around with it. And then I go ahead and I do a little pattern matching there. And uh, say I want to match for you know the word cookie, the word cute, the word sexy. That's right, sexy. I'll go through and loop through the whole page and look for the word sexy there and do a pattern match. So at the bottom, an array of URLs to check out. Initialize the index variable. Loop as long as there are URLs yet to read, which is in my URL array at the top. Read an entire page into a variable. Dump the number of matches that contain uh, the pattern, space, or, plus space. In this case, I look for the word or on the page. Um, and print the result as a formatted URL with number of matches and loop through it. 
ideas I have for this. Link to a database of submitted URLs and then read into array. That's what Asa La Vista does. This is pretty much what they do exactly. They let people submit their security um, and cracking URLs, and then they live search. Except lately, they've been kind of modifying it so there's about like a day or two lag where they actually perform the searches using a cron job, and then they keep the index there. Um, it's useful for news and info searches. You like that? News and info searches. Um, you want to save your matches into a database, and you can maybe create a simple index just like Asa La Vista does. Just make sure to refresh it. Web security. Oh, this is the, one of those phrases when you mention it, like everyone's ears perk up, you know, and they start to think about the dot. Okay, this guy, I got to point out, there's a guy up here. I don't know, he's not wearing a shirt. <laughs> I find this really, I can't look over on this side. I'm a little distracted. Like, I know it's hot in here, but we all have to cover up. But you know what? I'm just taking my shirt off, too. No. <laughs> yeah, come on. Depends how much applause and dollars I get shoved in my drawers. Okay. <laughs> PHP with socket read writes can monitor websites and servers. There's a company out there called Internet Seer. Has anyone heard of this company? They do free monitoring of your website to make sure it's up, and they charge you. They monitor it every hour, but they charge you if you want to do it every 15 minutes. Uh, that's kind of a cool idea, but you can make your own in about five seconds. Uh, yeah, three maybe even. Um, and we're going to look here, and you can basically uh, search your server for exploits. This is pretty exciting to me, I think. Uh, GRC.com does it with, um, they're using uh, com objects to go out and check your ports, and it's really, really slow. It's not slow just because it's Microsoft. It's slow because it requires like tremendous server overload to do it. I'd like to really try, and that's one of my goals maybe for the rest of the year, to write an open source security scanner uh, using PHP. But I invite everyone here to do it because they're inspired. <coughs> All right, Windows and Web Scanner. I do something very simple at the top. I set up an array of the ports I want to check. Port 80, Web. Port 443, SSL, Web. Um, and Port 139, which happens to be the NetBIOS port. Oh, what's that for? Okay. <laughs> I equals zero, I set up my index variable, and I while through it. And I go, and I use the shortcut, as was pointed out earlier, fsoc open. fsoc open opens a socket. Now, it's a shortcut because it actually takes care of the negotiation. Based on what you feed it, here I'm feeding it www.yahoo.com. If I fed it, uh, fed it ftp.yahoo.com, it would take care of the uh, initialization, you know, the little hello string, hey, I'm so happy to see you, and takes care of closing it for you. It's a good little shortcut. I feed it a port from my array, and then I just simply output whether the port's open or the port's closed. This is lightning fast when it does this. You could scan, uh, you know, you could scan your, uh, your would be a really nice idea is everyone who owns their own consulting company here would basically set up their own little security scanner in PHP that would go out to their clients' websites all the time and make sure that while you were gone, no one stupid took that firewall off the edge of their machines. Um, you initialize the index variable, create an array of ports to scan, start a loop through the ports, open a socket to the ports with fsoc open, um, set up a report output, so if you want to write it to a file, if you want to email it to your friends, like I did with mine. Um, and, oh, that's the other thing I did. After he started like hacking into it and he tried to guess my password, which by the way, it's not that sophisticated of a password. I'm not using like letters, numbers, and crazy symbols. He's just a pretty dumb guy. Right. I started to email him the reports that my website sent me of him hacking into it. That like stopped him real quickly. <laughs> so I looped back through the end. Ideas. Loop through low range ports. So maybe you want to go 1024 and below. Maybe you want to look for sub-7. Maybe you want to look for Napster running. Um, idea, output results to an HTML formatted email. Send it to the webmaster. That's what Internet Seer does. In PHP, it handles MIME types. And you can actually generate HTML emails with it. Um, so it's really cool. You can send out reports to people. Output your results to a text file and loop through several URLs. So modify my code and instead of just looping through the ports, do a higher level while, uh, while loop and loop through different URLs. Also, scan a range of IP addresses for vulnerabilities. Wow, what does that mean? Well, you're in the Uber Hackster track. Figure it out for yourselves. OK, the last one is the TCP IP activator. That's right. One night only, TCP IP activator. Um, first, you start with an FSOC open at the top. Um, and then you go ahead and say, oh, can you connect? If not, die. You can feed any strings via PHP to the desired server. You could emulate a browser of your choosing. 
you could emulate uh, an entire web page that's being sent to a page. Plus, you can use it to read, like I said, and communicate in raw sockets using the sockets implementation in PHP. So I simply here send a variety of useless information out of a file, and I grab useless information off their server. Open a socket to a host with timeout. You have no access to the port and the execution. So that way, you know, you, don't, you like pretty much die if you can't open a web uh, connection. Form a standard HTTP start request and loop through the file that you want into the end. Grab some of their lines, display them, and you can write to it with fput and fget. I use fget and fput here, you'll see. I put the header there, and I get the information off their web page. But you can also put information to someone's. You could set it to directly to their IP address if you want. You could spoof your browser version by writing the correct Mozilla version in the header. Everyone here knows that Internet Explorer calls itself Netscape when it actually goes to a web server. I thought that's really cool. Um, it's another innovation from Microsoft. Write that one down. Uh, another idea is through the timeout feature, create a mini TCP or IP server. Since you can control the execution of your PHP scripts, set up your own little PHP web server. There you go. It would be fairly undetectable. It wouldn't show up as Apache if someone were to query it. You can make it show up as anything you wanted. Test the number of simultaneous HTTP or FTP connections your host can handle. Very cool. Or you can just try to flood it and see if it shuts down. And lastly, send malformed headers to the page. <clears throat> this is the conclusion. Thus ends our fun, our trip here. Um, I talked about data mining and web security today. How to secure PHP. Tune up your PHP installation and use encryption. Please, please, PHP is new. It's happy. People are like loving it. People are starting to get that PHP vibe. You hear people whispering on the street, hey, you hear about PHP? So let's not create like a bunch of really insecure, crappy scripts that have a lot of like, you know, holes in them so that you can go get your like latest server for $1 because you changed the, the form header and variable from page to page. Please use security. Please filter out HTML. Please don't set the user ID to root and then delete an entire directory just because you want to. Data mining, how to use PHP's regular expressions and the fact that it native writes HTTP and FTP to collect URLs, email addresses, and anything else you want. Naked pictures of uh, the star of your choice. All throughout the web. Web security, create a simple port scanner and uh, that scans for Windows or web ports. I did an example of both. And then also TCP client server. What's next? I'd like to see a full featured TCP IP server handling multiple sockets and streams. It can be done. PHP is really fast. Run it on your box at home. PHP version of GRC.com uh, shields up. Um, you guys know who Steve Gibson is, right? He's in this like latest flap with Microsoft over right, the raw sockets implementation in Windows XP. He's like this kind of I my personal opinion of him is he's kind of this glory hound who's kind of like, you know, just happy that someone's listening to him. He probably is holed up in some room somewhere. You know, his mom didn't love him when he was a kid. And he's happy because everyone raises their hand and goes, I've been to Shields Up. It's so cool. Okay, I hate him. I hate him. So if he's in this room, I want to spot him right now. Okay, you can improve the speed of searches and execution in my script. I mean, obviously, I don't cache searches. I don't, uh, you know, check to see if there are other uh, processes running. I don't lock down the database or do any of those things in it. This is very simple. Um, PHP front ends to TCP IP clients like Windows Messenger and Amster. Windows Messenger is the MSN messenger that comes with Windows XP. It's like the integrated net meeting meets when, uh, hello, sir. OK, take your seat. Um, <laughs> it's the, the integrated client for it. There's a product called PHP Groupware, which is an open source groupware product that's intended to compete with uh, Exchange. It's kind of in its infancy, but it's a really cool product, project. It's at phpgroupware.org, and they basically uh, did a Napster emulation in PHP using the raw sockets in PHP. Very, very cool. And you can get it there. It's at SourceForge, too, because it's so cool. <laughs> Resources for further expl uh, exploration. PHP.net, it's the main website for PHP. Uh, the commercial company is Zen Technologies. Zen started by the two guys who recoded it. They used the Zen engine for free in PHP 4. And uh, PHP homepage has a full language reference, and it has kind of an integrated user community, so you can get a lot of your questions answered. Um, phpwizard.net, they have an application there called PHP uh, MyAdmin, which lets you basically admin your uh, MySQL databases 
from a web-based interface. So don't code that on your own, because it's already been done, and it's awesome. And they also have code examples there, including a PHP chat client. Uh, phpbuilder.com, which was just pr uh, purchased by internet.com. Um, so it may suck today. I don't know. <laughs> but it, it, it was a really great reference source. Uh, they would have weekly articles on, uh, on kind of pushing the boundaries of PHP. So phpbuilder.com is a really good site. Um, and devshed.com. They have a lot of great articles from beginner to advanced. Uh, they have a complete walkthrough, how to set up your own PHP, Apache, MySQL, and SSL implementation. They have a lot of different information on using uh, Postgres, SQL, as well as MySQL. All right, uh, I want to take uh, time at the end for questions. First, were there any questions about my presentation? OK, yes. Well, yes. Yeah. That's a good point. That's, that's a good point. If we're doing a commercial website, you might want to have a company that uh, handles your credit card processing for you so you don't have that liability on your website. Um, and if anyone has you know, $100,000, I have a couple really good concepts for companies. So uh, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, thank you guys very much for sitting here. You can eat now. Anyone who has any questions about PHP, please come up here. My name's Adam. Thank you very much. Ah!